the subconscious mind does sabotage the conscious mind every second of every day. It is the one that's in charge. In a battle between emotion and logic, emotion will always win, hands down, every time. From CMC Markets, this is the Artful Trader. And there are lots of opportunities. 100 point swing on the doubt. So I needed to have success for me to stop believing. A lot of people don't make successful trades because they're fearful. They don't know enough or they think they don't know enough. Hello and welcome to The Artful Trader. I'm Michael McCarthy, Chief Market Strategist at CMC Markets Asia Pacific. In our third season, we talk to the experts in their own fields to uncover what gives them the confidence to succeed. We uncover confidence, unlocking the secrets behind resilience, preparation and growth and how it can make you a better trader. Today, we're speaking to transformational consultant, Sarah Larmanen. Sarah unlocks the subconscious minds of her clients to reclaim lost confidence. She does so by unpicking the root causes of low self-esteem, among other issues. Sarah describes herself as a transformational ally. Her practice is based on the belief in the human capacity to evolve when the power of the mind is fully understood. Sarah, you're a trading coach, you're an expert in various therapies and strategies that help build traders up, and in particular, uh, you apply rapid transformational therapy. We'd like today to get an understanding of what it is that you do with traders. Uh, So perhaps we could start by asking, what is rapid transformational therapy? So rapid transformational therapy was developed by one of Britain's top therapists, Marissa Peer, and she is the therapist to various celebrities in the royal family. And she developed a method over 30 years that utilizes hypnotherapy and various um, psychotherapy tools to really affect change rapidly at a deep level within the subconscious mind. And so she has basically shared her formula and trained other people to do exactly what she does to get the results that she gets. Okay, well, let's get into why it's so important. Why don't people trust themselves? What, what's the origin of self-doubt? The origin of self-doubt is a belief found in the subconscious mind, and it's a limiting belief. It's usually typically a belief that sounds something like, I'm not smart enough. I don't know what's, as I essentially don't know what the right thing to do is. And if I don't know what the right thing to do is, I can't possibly trust myself. So what we do with this therapy is we go right into the subconscious mind through the use of another brainwave, which is uh, the alpha brainwave, to get into the subconscious mind and find out what's actually going on in there. Because you might consciously say, I do believe in myself. I know I'm competent. I know I've done the training. I've developed my hard skills. But then when you get into the subconscious mind, you find something very different. So why do our subconscious beliefs have such a grip on us? Well, because the subconscious mind is actually driving everything. All of your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, behaviors come from originally from the subconscious mind, the data running in the subconscious mind. And when you learn how to leverage it and actually get in there and clean things up and install the correct beliefs, your, your abilities, your capacity is limitless. What are some common subconscious beliefs and how do they impact confidence? One I find that's very common in traders in particular is the belief that I'm not really good enough. I'm not really talented enough. I don't really have that edge. And why do they believe that? They believe that because there's something that happened in their childhood, some event. It could be major trauma or it could be something that was very seemingly insignificant but they formed a belief in that moment in time about themselves. And that belief was, I'm not smart enough and I'm never going to be smart enough. And surprisingly, those childhood memories are still living in you, they're still living in me, and they're still impacting our behavior today. Okay, so are are these beliefs logical or illogical? They're illogical. So this this is what I love so much about this work because I have never once had a client go in back to a belief which is the root cause of why they are, let's say they have low confidence today and high self-doubt. I've never once had someone look back at that belief from their perspective today, turn it over, look at it every which way and decide that yes, indeed, they should have formed that belief. It's always illogical. And in that moment in time, 
there's a profound level of understanding and an opportunity to change that belief because you can see really how illogical it is and how it's irrelevant to your current day life, to your reality. How does self-doubt impact our decision-making as traders? So self-doubt triggers a fear response. So if you really are about to make a move or you're at a decision point, fear is essentially triggered if you don't believe that you have the capacity or the ability or the knowledge um, or the skills to understand the nuances or whatever you're looking at in a decision-making point in time. So it triggers fear. When you trigger fear, you have the stress response. And what happens is that you lose access to the higher functioning prefrontal cortex of your mind and all of your resources go to survival, the fear response. And that's essentially the last thing you would want to be doing, right? When you're, when you're analyzing a situation in a high-paced, um, fast-moving um, moment with a lot of information, data coming your way. You don't want to lose your highest order of functioning, your executive functioning. So by installing self-trust and installing incredible confidence, you have the capacity to mitigate that fear response. Do we learn to be fearful? I believe that we do. I understand that there's, there's only a couple of fears we were born with, and one of them is the fear of being dropped. That's a fear we're born with for good reason, right? Okay. Initially as an infant. But other than that, fear is learned. It's a learned response to life. Well, anybody who's seen a baby stick everything they can get their hands on in, in their mouth understands, I think, that there's not yes. a lot of fears present at that time. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so what's the relationship between emotion and behaviour? So emotion informs our behaviour. So we have beliefs held in your subconscious mind, and your thoughts come from those exact beliefs. Your thoughts that you're having in your mind create the emotions you're having, the feelings you're having in your body, and then we act and behave from those emotions and feelings. So, and our actions and behaviors determine our results and our performance. So it's really the quality of the emotions you're having that determines the quality of your performance and your results. So what, how do you determine the quality of your emotions? Well, that's by understanding the beliefs held in your subconscious mind. Are they healthy? Are they expansive? Do they support your ability to go out and take risk, to take measured risk? Or are they constantly self-sabotaging you and limiting your ability to, to grow and become better and better at your craft? I've heard this explained as your primitive brain hijacks your thinking brain. Yes. Well, if we're going to liken the primitive brain to the subconscious brain, I can tell you that, yes, the subconscious mind does sabotage the conscious mind every second of every day. It is the one that's in charge. In a, in a battle between emotion and logic, emotion will always win, hands down, every time. And the emotional mind is the subconscious mind. So how do we know when we're being driven by our emotional mind? Well, we're always being driven by our emotions. I think the question is, what is the quality of our emotions and what are those emotions leading us to do? Are they leading us to self-sabotage or to actually make and take great risks or make decisions or improve our systems? I think that's the question. Okay, so is it external measures that tell us or? Well, I think it's on, based on the way you feel, first and foremost. If you feel good emotion, positive emotion, I think that's a great indicator that you have sound uh, subconscious beliefs, beliefs that are supporting you. If you feel chronic stress, you feel fear, you feel doubt, you feel loneliness, you feel, or you have issues in other areas of your life, in your personal life, then I think that's a strong indicator that there is some cleaning up to be done in your subconscious mind. And the other thing is that it's not your fault. When you have these behavioral, these performance blocks, it's really important to understand that it's not your fault because the conscious mind can't outsmart the subconscious. So the best thing you can do is actually go in there, explore what it is. And the thing is, is it doesn't take that long to resolve and clean it up. And that's what I love about this method is that in one, two, three sessions, you can have a massive transformation. 
Perhaps it's just that you've explained it so well, but it sounds very straightforward. I mean, why is it hard to change old habits? It's hard to change old habits when you try to change them through the conscious mind. So we can sit here, Michael, and talk all day long about what, why you're not performing at the level you want to perform, and we'll never touch the subconscious. Right. We'll never get to the root cause. Okay. But if I put you into hypnosis and I start asking questions and we go in and find out what is the root cause, what's actually happening in that subconscious emotional mind that's driving your behaviors, then we're going to get answers. And then you have an opportunity to change it. Okay, so you, you've said two or three sessions delving into the subconscious can be enough to bring about very important change. Can you tell us how that works, what, what your therapies are? For example, I work with a lot of traders that come to me for this feeling of consistent doubt, uh, self-doubt in their trading, fear, that feeling of fear overcoming them, right? And they want to manage that or get that resolved or lowered enough so that it's not impacting their day-to-day trading. So how I start is I have a consult. We talk about the issues they're having. We determine what is the most pressing issue to deal with right away. And often, as I said, it's this self-doubt. It's this slow confidence. And then we would schedule a two-hour session. And what happens is hypnotherapy is just like being in a relaxed state. It's, it's like having a conversation with me where you're totally relaxed, you have your eyes closed, you remember everything, you're in complete control, and we just move through the process, through all the different tools that I have, and I walk you back to the memories that are fueling. So memories are just like data playing your subconscious on loop that are keeping those beliefs alive. So what we do is I regress you back, which just means asking your subconscious mind, what's the root cause of this? Why do you feel the way you do today whenever you go to make a trade? Why does that fear come up? And your subconscious will very easily give you memories that are the origin of that belief that created that. So the memory might be that you you lost a race, you were eight years old, it was elementary school, you you came last in the whole class in a running race, and some of the kids made fun of you, and you decided in that moment, I'm not good at this, and I'm probably not good at anything. And if I'm not good at anything, I'll never succeed. And in that moment, that gets locked into your subconscious, it's a belief, and it lives there. But then when you go back and you look at the memory, As an adult, you can go, I lost the running race, big deal. I was really good at this. I was really, you know, talented, you know, in art. And I was a, you know, amazing skier, whatever else it was. And realizing that was never true. And the fact that that belief, that memory is still playing in your subconscious and making you feel that way is totally illogical, right? So it's very liberating to release that. Oh, I understand why you, your clients feel lighter after a session. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so through the Artful Trader podcast series, we've been lucky to speak with people from all over the world who are you know, experts in trading. One of them was Jack Swager. Uh, Jack, of course, is the uh, author of the Market Wizard series. And, and Jack spends his time matching traders up with, with funds. And Jack said he's never seen a successful trader sit at the feet of another trader and learn that trader's method and make money that way. His belief is that every trader has to find their own way. Do you find that with traders as well, that that those beliefs that are holding them back are different or are they common? They're very common. There's only a handful of limiting beliefs that we see in our work and they are, I'm not enough. So it might be, I'm not smart enough. I'm not interesting enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not lovable. I'm not connected what I want is not available to me. Those are a few of the ones that always, that's if you take away everything else, boil it all down, that's what you'll get to. A lot of early work around trading was about suppressing emotion. But more lately, there's been a move towards using emotion. And we spoke with Annie Duke, who not only won a World Series of Poker tournament, but um, is a cognitive psychologist. And she was very big on recognising her emotions and utilising them. Do you have a view on how traders should deal with the emotional aspects of trading? I do. I think that it's incredibly important to be aware of emotions and not to take a back seat to them and let them be 
the things that inform your decision making without actually being conscious and aware of what's going on. So back to what I said originally, which was that the quality of the emotions, if they're positive emotions, you might feel a level of tension and excitement, but that's different from that feeling. And you can connect with that in, in session with me, that feeling of fear, that feeling of doubt, that feeling of I am not enough. That's very different. And when you can understand the difference between those two, then you know which emotions are actually informing you in a healthy, positive, profit-producing way and which ones are actually sabotaging you. <laughs> well, I'm very relieved to hear you say that. I've come to love the markets and I get quite excited about trading and I've been told a number of times by mentors that I need to make my trading more boring. <laughs> so oh, no. I, I look forward to having that discussion with them again after your input. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Excellent. So uh, I'd like to get an understanding for our listeners as to how this ha happens in practice. Could you run us through, uh, perhaps um, obviously we don't want to destroy any confidentiality, but could you give us a case study as to how this might happen? Yeah, so I've prepared a hybrid case study. And of course, my client confidentiality is of utmost importance. So I've put together a couple, a few different client scenarios to walk you through to show you how this actually works. Trader comes to me, they've been trading for five years, they're breaking even, but after analyzing all of their trades, they realize that they're not getting the results that they want. So we have a consult call, we talk about what are the issues, what are the biggest issues they're having, and basically we find out that, of course, it's that feeling of fear, it's that self-doubt, that constant doubt, and changing their strategy based on the doubt rather than being consistent and confident. So we go in and ask, what's the root cause of this self-doubt, this feeling of self-doubt that you're feeling now related to a childhood memory? The subconscious brings up a memory. So the first memory example I'm going to give is, and I always go to at least three memories because that's how we weave it all together. We get all the puzzle pieces through three memories. So the first one being, again, that elementary school running race example. So the first scene is the belief that came up after the running race was, I'm not good at this and I won't be good at anything. It'll always be this way. I'm going to fail. Second scene that comes up is 11 years old, report card time. The child brings their report card home. It's not good. The marks are very low. He or she is humiliated, embarrassed, shows mom and dad. They're very disappointed. They're shaking their heads. They're saying, what are we going to do with you? You need to work harder. You're not working hard enough. And they're clearly disappointed. And the belief that's formed in that particular scene, in that memory, was if I can't work hard and get good grades, I'll never be smart enough to get it. And I would just, I won't make it. I won't succeed. And then the third scene, the third memory that comes up in this case study is the child is 10 and he or she gets in trouble with their cousin for stealing candy from a store. They get caught. Mom and dad sit them down and say, you better tell the truth. Who did it? They're pressuring them. They're angry. And then they say, wait, whoever tells the truth will get a reward. So you decide, the client decides that they're going to tell the truth. They're going to fess up to it, but the cousin actually did it. The cousin actually stole the candy, but they think, well, if I tell mom and dad, they'll be proud of me. I did the right thing. Well, the client fesses up. He gets harshly punished and decides, I thought it was the right thing to do, but clearly it was the wrong thing to do. Therefore, I can't trust myself because if I think something's right, it's actually going to be wrong and I can't be trusted to make the right decisions. In other words, I can't trust my own instincts. And that's a really interesting example. And I had to share that because that comes up a lot. A childhood memory where you thought you were doing the right thing and then you get this total opposite response and you decide in that moment, I can't trust myself. Well, then when we look back in the session and go over the, those, those particular memories, and the third one, for example, the client realized that, no, I was doing what I thought was the right thing. I was, I was a good kid. I was trying to make my parents feel better. It was a high pressure. I was scared. 
But then looking back on my life, have I made good decisions? Yes, I have made good decisions. Do I have good instincts? Yes, I have good instincts. I don't always get it right, but I usually get it right. So in that moment, as you're going over this, you're, going, you're, you're changing that actual belief, the way that data is running in your subconscious. And then after we've done that, I create a, a recording. We call it a transformational recording. And it installs all of the correct beliefs that we've just rewired into your subconscious. And you listen to that every day for 21 days, and that's how you change the subconscious, how you actually hardwire it. So we rewired in the session, then you hardwire it over 21 days by just constantly flooding the subconscious with the correct beliefs, which are essentially the beliefs you were born with. You were born with confidence. You were born to be clear-minded, to, you know, to try things, as you said earlier, with babies, right? Mm. You could try anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So at the heart of what you do, you you help traders overcome doubt and fear. Exactly. Yeah. It does not take decades. It doesn't take a lifetime to resolve these issues. And that's another reason why I love this therapy. Fantastic. Well, as somebody who's used hypnotherapy to give up smoking, I, uh, I understand what you're saying, but I had never thought of applying it to trading. Is, is, what, you're doing is, uh, is what you're doing considered radical in the trading community? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. Is it? <laughs> you might be the better one to answer that. Is that <laughs> radical? Well, uh, I, I'm a rugged individualist, so I, I tend to avoid discussing that sort of thing with traders. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's about keeping okay. my methods to myself. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think so. I must say, um, you know, 25 years ago, uh, meditation was a new thing in trading, you know, calming the mind and uh, putting yourself in a good state to trade. But it's pretty commonplace these days, I must say, and, and particularly with the newer, younger traders coming through, they seem to be much more open to uh, drawing on uh, knowledge and, and wisdom from, from other fields of study. So, Yeah, that's wonderful. There's a real hunger for it, a real interest um, in learning more about this and understanding the psychological edge to their performance. So I, I see that there's a great interest out there and that's really exciting. How do your clients find you? Well, I do speaking engagements, so they find me through that. And then I have a website at sarahlamanen.com and I blog on there and I, I love hearing from people to you know answer questions and you can schedule consult calls on my website, and that's how they find me. That was Sarah Larmanen in the first episode of The Artful Trader, Confidence Uncovered. This series, we're talking to experts in their own field to unlock the secrets behind resilience, preparation, determination, and growth, and ultimately how this can make you a better trader. Join us next time.